Hello everyone and welcome to another twin test of the ages. Today I've brought down Jack from number 27 once again and the last time he was on the channel we were comparing Evoras. Well Jack obviously agrees with my taste in cars because not too long ago he acquired this classic Impreza WRX. So naturally with me owning the bug eye we thought let's compare the two. Now, I don't know too much about the models, certainly not enough to really educate you guys, so instead today is going to be talking about how different this car feels and whether it really deserves the fabled reputation that it has in comparison to my slightly unloved bug eye. Let's go. My first impressions of Jack's car are just how clean, tidy and original it feels, especially on the inside. It's got the original Nardi wheel, which feels noticeably smaller and better in the hand than the huge Momo item that comes as standard in mine. The gear lever has basically worn its pattern off, but the gear box has been rebuilt, as has the engine, and it just feels delightful. Subarus have a reputation for having handling that's not great. Now this car has clearly been fairly well looked after because the steering is very direct and very positive. Now I can't tell whether that's because my car is really in need of some new bushes or this is just the difference between a classic and a bug. I have only driven two Impreza's and that's these two. seems to want to spool a little later and slower than mine and I felt like it didn't pull quite as hard but really there was very little in it. Now the official power figure for this car is 276 horsepower but in the typical Japanese fashion that may have been something of an underestimate. It still felt a little pegged back and the car didn't really want to go right to the red line like my modified bug eye does. Now in terms of modifications, the only really notable one on Jack's car was the obligatory exhaust upgrade. We don't know why it had been done or what the system was, it may have been a custom job, but it was a fairly straight system with a basic resonator at the back and that was it. Beyond that though, the car was remarkably standard. One of the few issues with that exhaust in particular is that because this car is a Japanese import there wasn't a genuine WRX sold in the UK uh, officially when this was out. It's got very Japanese gearing. So you're only getting about 20 mile an hour per thousand revs in top gear. That means that cruising on the motorway at 70 you're doing three and a half thousand RPM. It's probably about 600 higher, maybe 700 than I would be in that car and that does make a big difference. If you wanted to do a long journey, you're gonna wanna look at that, I think. Now I know Jack has bought a little decibel killer which is used on occasion, but we both agree that it's probably not the best thing to run in this car long term. The interior is wonderfully 90s Japanese. It's even got the original stereo in it. <laughs> it's really, really cool. It's got CD and cassette. This must have been expensive when it was new. Now I know that the 5-speed gearbox that this car and mine use does get some stick for being pretty fragile. Um, that's the reason why this has been rebuilt and my car's on its second box. However, both of them feel really, really nice to use. This one's perhaps a touch notchier than mine, but it suits the mechanical feel of this car. You see here the reason that I haven't spent too much time cleaning my car because uh, we haven't got the snow anymore in this country but it is currently very very wet. Now uh, one other little sign that this is a true Japanese car is the location of the indicator on the right hand side of the wheel. I actually kind of like it there though, I've driven a few cars with this setup now and I must say once you get used to it I think I prefer it because you can be changing gear and indicating at the same time as I did just there. And from a looks perspective alone I have to say I prefer my car. It looks much more masculine and it's in the correct colour. I'm not a massive fan of white cars and this one just looks a bit soft to me. 
I'm enjoying the drive immensely so far and I'm looking forward to getting it on some slightly more demanding roads but in terms of a sheer look at it and want it doesn't do to me what my car does. Driving cars in this kind of condition is really nice though because you read an awful lot of things about what Subarus are like to drive and if I was to judge a Subaru based only on what the internet says you'd say that it was a very fast car but pretty woolly and not very engaging, certainly not much of a driver's car but actually nothing could be further from the truth. This car shows that properly looked after and maintained that these are really really pleasant to steer. It's that steering at the moment I think that's getting me. Between the two cars, it's certainly a case, as with the Evoras, of far more similarities than differences. I prefer the interior on my car, although it does need a little bit of a tidy up. These are wonderful roads and really meant for this type of car. Unfortunately, one Ford C-Max can derail your fun. You get nods from people. People like these cars. They've got a following. They're a cult car. Now, while I'm not able to enjoy the performance too much at the minute, there is something I want to discuss, which is that in the last few years, we have seen the prices of uh, performance and classic cars rise dramatically. And it means that where a few years ago, if you had five, 10,000 pounds to spend on a car, you had a huge range of cheap cars available to you. But now, certainly if your thing is Japanese performance cars, well, the prices have just gone up, in some cases, ridiculously. And that means that if you haven't got the most generous of budgets, your choices are quite limited. Now, to get your hands on a Mitsubishi Evo, you need to be spending at least around seven or eight thousand pounds. And an equivalent Subaru STI is a similar amount. However, you can pick up a good WRX for about half that. These truly are performance bargains. <laughs> I'd say another area where my car is the better car, it breaks. These are, these are not, you need to press hard on these to get them to do anything. Now I haven't quite found out what the limit of their ability is, but they are not the most intuitive things to use, that's for sure. However, throttle response is very good, and as with my car, you can heel and tow quite easily. Given the fact that this car is quite a bit lighter than mine, I was expecting a rawer experience. And I don't just mean in terms of the drive, I mean in terms of refinement. But actually, I would say this is pretty much on par with my bug eye. I got perhaps a little bit more immediate confidence in this car than my own. That's probably down to the steering. In terms of the driving position, I feel like I'm perhaps sat a touch higher in this car. Is that his settings? No, the seat is fixed in terms of height. So it's probably the fact that the dash layout is a little bit different. I have a beefier dash, it's a little bit taller. And you've still got that familiar view out the front, of course, with the big scoop. Miss the wing out of the back though. I do miss that. Car's got aircon. You can easily put a more modern double din head unit in here if you wanted to. The seats are nice and comfy. They support my sides quite well. Often someone of my size can have issue in seats designed for a Japanese person, but no problem here. I must confess, I did worry before I drove this car that I would have a sudden hankering for a classic Impreza. I do really like the look of them, especially if they are in full STI garb. But at the minute, and now I'm not saying I don't like this car because I really do like this car, but I don't think I'd swap mine for it. No. This handles nicer. Mine brakes better and goes better. Truthfully though, because so many of these cars have been modified, mine included, this one's reasonably standard, 
generally you're comparing car to car. Now, at some point in the near future, I'm gonna hopefully compare my car with another new age Impreza, and that'll maybe give me a better opinion of what my car's like and what my car could be like. I'm sure there are areas on my car which need tending to, and well, we shall see how we get on with that. For now though, this is a great, great car to drive. And that's something, doing YouTube, I've had a chance to drive an awful lot of cars and challenge a lot of preconceptions. Uh, people will think that these aren't really great driver's cars, they're just sort of louts cars and you know, the all-wheel drive system does stuff for you and yeah, you know, I suppose it's some of the similar reputation that the GTR enjoys, but no, this is a great car. It's very, very mechanical. Just, it's just nice. I like it. Now, I've really enjoyed driving Jack's car today, and I thank him for bringing it up. If you haven't checked out his channel already, it's called Number 27. You'll find the link to his half of this twin test in the description so you can see what he thinks of my bug eye. Now I want to thank you guys for watching. I also want to apologize just in case this video at any point has been interrupted by audio glitches because I have been having troubles with my radio mic recently. It is going to get off and sent to be fixed soon, but that costs a lot of money and I don't really want to live without the radio mic for very long because it's incredibly useful. I want to thank you guys for sticking with the video. If you haven't already, please give it a thumbs up, give it a nice big like. It really does make a difference to me. Comment below if you'd like to. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing and hitting the bell, which will notify you when I've released a new video. I've been JM on Cars. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.